Welcome to The Undercurrent. It's been two years since my last video. I now have two small children. It's good to be back. The year 2020 can eat a giant bag of moldy dicks. Within a few months, the world has seen Australians as brave, generous compatriots, and then selfish mouth breathers who would sell their own mother for a fresh bog roll. The impact of the novel coronavirus cannot be overstated. Tragically, many of our fellow citizens will have their health affected, and every one of us will feel the financial impact. Governments and banks have started to step in and provide forms of relief, but they've mostly been targeted so far at businesses. Yet there's one avenue of relief that could help all of us that no one seems to be talking about. Credit cards. This year, credit card debt in Australia that is accruing interest totals $32.2 billion. And that number's only gonna go up as people who have lost their incomes are unable to pay down debt. In the United States, credit card debt is over $1 trillion. And customers there pay $100 billion every year just in interest and fees. To understand this sanctioned extortion, we'll need to talk about something called the cash rate. That's the rate at which central government banks will loan money to commercial banks, who then lend it to businesses and consumers for a healthy markup. Today, the cash rate is 0.25%. Yet somehow, standard credit card rates are between 19 and 20%. Even allowing for the amoral necropecunia of the banking sector, that markup seems excessive. Let's take a look at a history of the cash rate over the last two decades. As you can see, it's gone down quite a bit. And most financial instruments will generally roughly follow the trend, albeit a little higher. We can have a look at average home loan rates or government bond yields. Now let's take a look at credit card interest rates over the last 20 years, which, funnily enough, follow a line similar to the life expectancy of ethical standards in the banking sector. And you can see here early on, banking ethics are showing some vague signs of life, but then things start to get a little bit dicey. And yep, right there around 2010, that's when the bank stopped pretending and pulled the plug on the ventilator that was just barely keeping their emphysemic morals alive. Now, there are good reasons why credit card interest is higher than other forms of lending. They're effectively unsecured loans, you don't need collateral, there's no penalties for early repayments, but even allowing for those things doesn't explain that. Now, many banks do offer so-called low interest credit cards, but they're extremely limited products, and even their interest rate is completely disconnected from reality. And you would think in a market like this with so much wiggle room between the unit cost and the sales price, it would just be ripe for competition, right? No, all of the bank's interest rates are remarkably similar. That's called price fixing, and it's supposed to be illegal. Lazy, corrupt mother. Card brands like Visa and MasterCard are just the middlemen. They do apply a small fee of about 0.1% on every transaction that comes through their network. Don't get me wrong, that still adds up to a metric shite load of cash, but it's banks that are the most to blame here. And they've proven they can't be trusted to do the right thing on their own. Thanks to the recent Royal Commission in Australia, we know that they systematically overcharge customers. We know they're okay with charging fees to dead people. We know that they bathe in the salty tears of their bankrupted customers. Okay, that last one was inaccurate. We suspect that they bathe in the salty tears of their bankrupted customers. We know they've just been given $90 billion of cheap money from the government, and we know that that is taking the piss. So to our politicians, who work for us and have both the legislative and regulatory power to hold these chode gobbling queef merchants to account, let me make a few suggestions and rank them in order of how baller they would be. If you were to say force banks to put a pause on the charging and accrual of interest on credit card debt until this crisis is over, that'd be pretty baller. If you were to force banks to re-tether their credit card interest rates to the cash rate, that would be totes baller. And if you were to use that relative measure to calculate how much interest has been overcharged since this usury began in 2010 and force the banks to refund that money to their customers, that would be baller as fuck. This is a chance to prove to us that you care more about average citizens than the banks who pay millions into your campaigns and have cushy board seats waiting for you in retirement. You have the legislative power, you have the will of the people, and in this crisis, you have the political capital to make bold moves. You know what you don't have? Excuses.